My name is Elizabeth Sin, and the title of my book is Pacific Crossing, California Gold, Chinese Migration, and the Making of Hong Kong. In the second half of the 19th century, tens of thousands of Chinese migrated to California, which they called Gold Mountain, and became part of American history. They created many ties across the Pacific, ties that changed the Pacific into a new vibrant economic, social, and cultural zone. These multiple ties, moreover, profoundly affected the development of Hong Kong, the port of embarkation on their way out of China, and the port of disembarkation on their way home. At the same time, Hong Kong facilitated and changed the migration and played a central role in the Chinese diaspora. The book describes not only the flow of people, but the flow of goods, capital, ideas, information, and cultural beliefs and cultural practices, even of coffins and bones of diseased migrants. Using a wide range of materials from libraries and archives, some never used, I study areas which had been neglected, such as trans-Pacific shipping and the prevalent use of sailing ships well into the 19th century. I also study the network of firms that participated in the thriving trade between Hong Kong and California. These trades not only led to Hong Kong's prosperity, but had a long-term impact on the region as well. I look at many dimensions of migration, including the return of migrants' bones to the native village in China, and the financial implications of the money they sent home. Almost invariably, this huge amount of money went through Hong Kong and became a vital source of sustenance as well as capital in South China. I break down old stereotypes and offer new interpretations on controversial issues. For instance, I point out how, for political reasons, American politicians insisted on calling the Chinese traffic to California the coolie trade and on equating it with slavery, even though the migrants went on their own free will. I also take a new look at why so few Chinese women went to California in the late 19th century. In addition, I offer the idea of the in-between place as a new paradigm in migration studies. I argue that migration scholars should study more than just the sending country and the receiving country, because migrants actually travel through many different localities before finally settling down, if at all. Some of these localities are important in shaping and coloring the migration process, both long-term and short-term. I believe that anyone interested in the history of modern China, Hong Kong, the Chinese diaspora and the Pacific, in Sino-American relations, in Chinese-American studies, in women's history, business history, or migration studies, will find this book interesting.